Why, hello there, me old chums. I know you 360 addicts have been looking for some more non-backwards compatible recommendations to nab yourself before the dreaded Xbox 360 store closure. So here we are back with part three to scratch that itch. Bring it. Yeah, rebooting the beloved Turok series into a fecking moody, bland and ruddy soulless military shooter in a vain attempt to lure in the Call of Duty crowd was never going to go down all that blooming well with the fans of the original. I am Turok. But even though the aptly named Call of Turok may have missed the fecking mark when capturing the charm of the OG Turok's dino slaying outings hidden deep in its dense and rich jungle environments is a surprisingly dumb and ruddy fun shooter. I mean, come on, let's be honest. What other game lets you perform stealth kills on dinosaurs for feck's sake? You're not so ruddy clever now, are you, girl? But if quietly slashing unaware dinos isn't enough to tickle your prehistoric pickle, well, funnily enough, Turok 2008's story, art style, voice acting, as well as its music and sound design are the actual ruddy Stone Age tits. That still to this day do not get talked about enough. Trust me, it may not be original in the damn slightest, but a lot of love was actually poured into this game, resulting in an extremely cinematic experience. Experience. The game isn't hard to find and won't cost you a pretty penny either. So what do you have to ruddy lose? You were a revolutionary fighter. A memory hunter, Miller. The best. No one seems to remember... Uh, remember me. Which is a fecking shame as not only is the sci-fi memory-based twist-a-minute story deeply engaging, but gameplay-wise, remember me also boasts a wholly unique experience that combines satisfyingly fluid, precision, perfect, rhythm-based Arkham-esque combat with a sprinkle of memory-manipulating, head-feckery minigame-esque antics to boot. Other uh, mechanics like the puzzles and platforming are also well developed as is the gorgeously lit, fully realised world that Absa Ruddy lootly pops out of the screen. The game is still pretty affordable, but finding a copy out in the wild is becoming more and more scarce, so if you do stumble across it, just remember Petridge Farm remembers that your favourite beer chugging bro told you to pick it up. Something personal. Yeah, no one shoots him in the ass and gets away with it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, they ruddy didn't. Oh, well, I guess they did, actually. Yes, the powers that fecking be forgot to make the playground of destruction antics of mercenaries too backwards, ruddy, compatible, and even bloody worse, you can no longer play the game at its best in its ridiculously dumb fun co op mode. But, even so, if you are playing on your old Todd, then the game is still a cause carnage your way shenanigans based ruddy romp not to be missed. That's extremely silly story and explosion a minute gameplay is just sheer entertainment done ruddy right. Okay, how about you call me once you sober up? You see, how you want to complete your mission is up to ruddy you. Can't be asked to fight that final boss, well just nuke him instead. Sounds good, right? Well it is. Mercenaries 2 is ridiculous, but it's ridiculously fun at the same time. Once again, you won't struggle to find a copy and the game is still ruddy and expensive, so whop it into your collections right now. When a game has an achievement called Scrotality, you know you're onto a ruddy winner. Yes, Dead to Rights Retribution is that game that allows you to take control of your canine partner and either stealthily pick off goons, or if you're a sick, sick, sick fecker like me, you can just run straight at them and tear off their old todger and mangle their knackers until they are properly fecking Effect. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. When you're not taking down thugs like you're a four-legged bat dog, you'll be spraying lead at your foes and engaging in some good old fisty cuffs. 
So, to put it bluntly, dead to rights retribution is just a ridiculously over-the-top, blood-soaked, brutal romp that revels in its cartoonish, gratuitous violence, which in turn, thanks to the game's excellent pacing and humour, never, ever seems to drag. But come on, doggo ding dong, chomping shenanigans should be enough to make you add this to your collections. The game won't be too difficult to track down and it won't break the bank either. We have our orders. Leave the city, radio command from outside the Stormwall. They send in the cavalry, we go home. For whatever ruddy reason, up until recently you could download the eerie and unnerving master fecking piece that is Spec Ops The Line from basically any online store. But video game preservation be damned as just a few months back, 2K Games decided they felt like being absolute ruddy bellens and removed the game from digital storefronts, meaning it's time to stop dilly-dallying and grab yourself a physical ruddy copy. Do you feel like a hero yet? However, it may be easier said than done as scalpers really are tossers and have made the game not only explode in price, but also devoured most easily available copies. Why? Yet, I still urge you to seek out Spec Ops The Line as it really is the camouflage covered tits and unlike any other military shooter out there. Which is all thanks to the game's emotional, anxiety-inducing, morality-questioning, absolutely head feck of a story that is as gripping as it is ruddy disturbing. This isn't right. And yeah, sure, while the gameplay is your typical third-person cover-based shooting antics ever so prevalent of the time, where Spec Ops differs is due to the game's ability to mess with the player. You'll question your each and every action and you'll never know what you can actually ruddy believe. Welcome to hell. The masterful implementation of morality just evolves a fairly standard shooter into a psychedelic, psychological horror experience not to be fecking missed. As previously mentioned, the game's gonna set you back a bit of dosh and everyone and their ruddy dog is hunting down a copy, so Spec Ops The Line is only gonna become more and more scarce and more and more expensive. Buy my new game! Buy my new game! Dad, buy me this new video game! Krusty said you have to! <laughs> video games are so fake! How can you die a million times and still be okay? <laughs> It is no ruddy secret that Simpsons hit and run is the fecking yellow shaded tits as well as being goaded when it comes to Springfield based video game shenanigans. But until we get that remaster we all deserve, I urge you not to run but to glide yourself over to picking up a copy of 2007's The Simpsons Game. Not only is the title the best looking version of the beloved characters and town that defined our childhoods but the power harnessing based platforming is surprisingly inventive while also being well implemented into each and every aspect of the game. But why you would be SMRT to treat yourself to this platformer is the tongue in cheek humour that pokes fun at just about every ruddy popular video game and all the tropes that come with them as it will have you chuckling throughout. I hope that gun didn't have a family. And yeah, even though the game does have 18 levels, it is a pretty short experience overall. Yet all the challenges, collectibles and local co-op had a healthy dose of replayability. So if you're a fan of The Simpsons or video game satire, well this game is worth your time. It may not be the cheapest though, but it's a lot less expensive than Clown College and shouldn't be too hard to hunt down. So, um, what's your name? I Teodal. If you followed your ruddy yellow teethed alcoholic narrator's advice and nabbed yourself a copy of Spec Ops The Line, well I'm sure upon completion you're not only questioning your fecking sanity, but also you may be feeling a little, uh, wrong. Yeah, let's just say wrong. But, hey ho, don't be so glum chum, as I've got the goods for what ails you in the form of a game known as Margin in the Forsaken Kingdom. No! Leave me alone! 
as not only will the beautifully lush and vibrant world brush the dust and sand out of your old peepers, but also its story of friendship, teamwork, and overcoming the ruddy odds will likely help you forget about the horrible, ruddy horrible things you did as old Captain Walker. Do you feel like a hero yet? Forsaken Kingdom blends puzzle-solving, platforming, and combat to produce a grand old heartwarming adventure with gameplay clearly inspired by the likes of Zelda and Ico, where teaming up with your goofy, lovable, golem-like creature is the key to survival and returning the beautiful world back to its best. But why the game still lives rent-free in my alcohol-damaged brain and why I recommend you go check it out is the Pixar-esque fairy tale narrative that, while magical and colourful, is still a very much mature and poignant tale that can be enjoyed no matter your ruddy age, trust me. The game is slowly, gradually rising in price, so grab it now. Venetica is a bit like Marmite. You're either gonna ruddy love it or fecking hate it, but I say give it some time as hiding under its many issues is a linear, fable-esque RPG adventure with simple yet fun gameplay as well as a striking fantasy Venetian environment to explore that's populated full of weird and eccentric characters as well as the game having a pretty unique story about fighting against death himself as his own daughter. Sure, the game isn't all that complex, but sometimes just losing yourself in a strange world of magic combat engaging quests and a fantastic atmosphere doesn't need to feel like fecking hard work, does it? This one is pretty well priced, but copies don't seem to be all that easy to come by anymore. On here. 007, this is urgent. Grego has flown in a group of international terrorists. In episode 2 of this series, I gave you not one, but two games to check out from developer Bizarre Creations in the form of Blur and The Club. But I foolishly left out the team's stab at making their own Bond title, gosh darn it. Which is likely due to the game's extremely short, ruddy runtime. But ignore the game's length though, as if you're in the mood for some mindless, cover-based shootouts and some explosive action set pieces that are broken up by some of the best vehicular, adrenaline, ruddy pumping segments to ever grace a Bond title. As well as a story that stands tall with the best of the modern Bond flicks, well then 007 Bloodstone will likely tickle and shake but not stir that old pickle of yours. I, I understood that reference. Yeah, yeah, sure it is a little bit short, but it's a sweet, stylistic, bombastic experience that at only four English pounds is the perfect cheap night in. Right, thanks for listening to me have another beer-infused ramble about the games that are likely to be stuck on older systems forever. Don't forget to leave your favourites down below so I can give them a shout-out in the next ruddy video. But, until then, as always, you guys stay tipsy.